Are y'all been having fun today? Yeah. <laughs> I know I've been having fun. Uh, the team took me out. I ate at a great restaurant here that I think is fairly new uh, called Flint. Had you guys down there yet? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah very, very good, very good. We had a ball last night. You know, this is this is my first time actually coming to to Albany, or do you all pronounce it Albany? Which one is it? Albany. Albany. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> okay, let me make sure I get it right. But one, but one thing for sure is I, I truly um, and, enjoy any time I have the opportunity to come out and share what my gifts are with the world. And I always like to leave something behind. And, I, and I'm looking here, you know, and just from, from everything that Dr. Dawson uh, has been sharing with me about the community, the surrounding farmers, like you guys are really doing an amazing thing. And then this is, I think, this is probably just the tip of the iceberg of some of the, some of the vegetables and crops that you guys grow. And I feel that the, the world really should know about it. Uh, I was just brought in these beautiful green okras. How many of you guys like okra? I We got zucchini, we got tomatoes, we got peaches. Uh, look like we got cilantro, parsley, snap peas, onions. Chef Romance, it looks like this is kind of like a playground for us. We even got some penne pasta. While I'm looking at all this stuff for the first time, I'm trying to figure out what it is that we're going to make. And just from looking at this, um, I think I'm going to probably do a a Cajun style pasta. Do you guys have any kind of Creole Cajun foods of any sort? And I promise not to make it spicy at all so everybody be to eat it, but we're gonna kick it up a notch because we're gonna add some of that Warrior Creek whole hog in it. Now, now I had the opportunity to experience in this whole hog uh, some of the sausages uh, about a month or so ago and it is amazing. And, and if you notice, I had to put in uh, in the name of it, whole hog. See, normally people use half hog, but this time we want to make sure we put in whole hog because there's a difference in the flavor when you use all of it and no fillers. Yes. And that's what it's about, controlling what we put in our body. So, I'm thinking about going to pasta. Wait, what about you, Chef? What do you think about going? I think I'm going to go and uh, cook up these sweet potatoes. He loves him sweet potatoes, you probably eat them raw. And you know, you know, just like my, my brother is from Alabama, so that's he used to cook up those uh, yeah. that okra and potatoes together. Yeah. Some salt and pepper. And it was it was ready to go. Alright, so let me ask you, how many of you guys know how to make pasta sauces from scratch? Anybody know how to make a pasta sauce from scratch? No? A lot of these shows, what they tend to think is, is that it requires a lot. You can create a unique meal, a chef-inspired dish, in the comfort of your home, and a lot of times with products that you already don't have on hand. You know, of course, when you go to restaurants, you think about, oh, man, this is really upscale, but they're, they're, not, they're using the same thing that you would have at your home except it's about blending the flavor profiles together to, to get a unique experience. So, I'm gonna ask this question. Do anybody know the first thing to create a great meal, you know what's the first thing you should do? You should get your miso plots together. Do anybody know these culinary students know what that is? But do you all know what miso plots is? <laughs> it's, it's French for just saying, get all your ingredients together. So the next time you want to impress somebody, just say, go in there and get the miso plots out for <laughs> You'll be talking French to a little wee wee. But first, what we're going to do is we'll take half the butter. I'm going to take all your butter. I see Chef got plenty of sticks of butter all over there. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to add this stick of butter to the skillet. And why, 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 why are you add the butter in first, thing? Because I want, I want to clarify it down. But this is what you do now. When you're using, when you're using real butter, real. yeah, real butter. Not that I can't believe you, not butter, but real butter. Yeah. <laughs> Use brown butter for certain things, but what you want to do is to keep. 
keep it from burning, you want to add in a little olive oil to it. You can add olive oil or vegetable oil to your butter, and it keeps your butter from, bur from burning and turning real brown, and it also secures the flavor. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start on some of these green beans. Now, by all means, yeah, at any time you want to hop in, just hop in. I don't want to be long-winded on today. I'm just, I'm, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to see how you're uh, you going to get your roux. This, this is what you going to make roux out of? That's what I'm going to make my roux out of right there. That's what I'm, But this is one of the things that I'm going to do real quick, guys, I'm going to show you. See, it's all about the flavor profiles. It's about building flavor profiles. We're not gonna make that root just yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play with this butter for a little bit before we're going to make the root. And that's for the, that's to make a more impactful flavor. Because this is one of the things. Before I was calling the family chef, I was under I was under the trade name the Chef of Love. And that's where he and Chef Romance was born from. Because it was Chef of Love, Chef Romance. But one of the things that we truly believe that food and love goes hand in hand. I know that you all have heard the stories many a times about the quickest way to anybody's heart is do what? Do their stomach. Exactly. And it is true. People, a lot of people don't seem to grasp. If you cook the right way, you bring them back every time. That's why you find people that really love your cooking, love somebody that's cooking. There's something about them because when you cook, it's a part of you that's being attached to that meal. Food is at the focal point of everything. I always tell people, hey, food is, not only do we do we eat to live, but we eat to feel good in the whole nine yards. Quick story, and I always share this with everybody. But if you look at it this way, somebody planned to have a wedding. The guy asked the lady to marry us. She tell him, oh, yes, I do, and they start playing the wedding. They fuck the whole point of a wedding is about what? Walking down the aisle and saying, I do. But I tell you what, you go to that reception and let the food be terrible. The people walk from their wedding and say it was the worst wedding they ever went to. And it, wasn't, it shouldn't even be about the food. But that's how people are so tied in on food. Yeah. On the downside of things, somebody passed away. You at the funeral crying and hollering, falling all in the casket saying, Lord, take me, would you? Why did they have to go? 30 minutes later, they had to repass eating fried chicken and laughing like that. Put them on the ground. Next time you go to the mirror, just watch and see what happened at the repast. Also, when people, when people are at restaurants, it's hard to eat in front. Next time you sit somewhere, just look around while people are eating. It's very hard to eat and frown because food really ties into our emotions. And I always tell people, there is no right or wrong way to cook. And what I mean by that is, you truly are supposed to cook the way you feel. Because when you cook the way you feel, those are most retired. You have a good day, you go in the kitchen, you cook a dish, everybody eat it up, there's no leftover. One of those days when you're feeling bad, you go in and make that same dish. People eat you got leftovers in the refrigerator, they're like, I don't know what's wrong with it. You're like, I ain't doing anything different. It was the way you were feeling when you made it. That's why you find yourself loving your mother's cuisine, your grandmother's cuisine, that cuisine, particular person in your life. That's why ladies, if you cook it good, you keep them around. But don't get it twisted, guys. You want to be able to at least cook good, too. Don't sit there talking about all I know how to do is boil water. You better get in there and figure it out. And that's one of the reasons why I, I always made it a mission to get on TV to show people that, hey, you, you can be a man and still cook great food because food is one of those generational things of just showing love, as I like to call it, paint a picture with your plate. I originally learned how to cook with, by spending time with my father. I'm one of those third generation chefs and I would spend time with him and at the time, you know, I looked up to him and I thought it was something amazing. But if anybody ever, ever asked me what I was going to be when I grew up, I always told him I was going to be a lawyer. But apparently God had other plans for me. I didn't even went to school and majored in political science and a mind in a business degree while owning a restaurant, but in my intention was never to open up a restaurant, or own one. I just say I knew how to cook. So I, I wanted to do that to earn money while in college, but almost 30 years later, here I am now, still cooking. I'm cooking for y'all in all big. <laughs> but now, as you notice, what I just did is, guys, I, while talking to y'all, I cut the ends off of the, the okra, the green beans, and I put that in the grease. Now what we're going to do here is taking some of the cilantro. And I'm just going to miss, lightly miss the 
ends right here so that we can break some of the flavor. And then what you do is like, whenever you go for a nice mix, you mix it out, then you bring it in, mix it again. We're gonna fold some of this also into our oil. And all I'm doing at this point is just enhancing the oil. We're gonna add a little kosher salt. And notice I said kosher salt, not iodine salt, because see, when you're cooking with kosher salt, those are the salts that you should cook with. Iodine salt is nothing more than high blood pressure in the car. You know, kosher salt, sea salt, those are pure salts that you drop off when you get here. Those are pure salts that you want to put in. Which one you Which one you feel? Which one you feel? We got bow tie and we got penne pasta. Which one would you guys rather experience? Bow tie or penne pasta? Penne, all right, penne it is, and that's what we're going to. Yeah, but then, uh, again, we'll add that salt. In the culinary world, iodine salt is just used for flavor. It's, it, you shouldn't use it to, to cook with because once you cook it with that, uh, with that iodine salt, it seeps into, your, into the pores of your vegetables and your meat. So when you like, it ain't salty enough, but once it starts to reduce down, you're like, oh, I feel like I put too much salt in it. That's because it don't already seep into the pores of your meat. And once you over, over uh, put too much salt on it, then you can't, you can't take it away. And also, I just added in some onions on the finishing end of the butter. I don't know, Chris, is the camera zoomed in where they can see what's going on right here? Fine. So you guys can see what's going on in this pot. Look behind you, sir. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Let's get y'all close. There you go, get all the sitting there back. <laughs> <laughs> now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna keep this butter and olive oil, but we're gonna remove the green beans, the okra, and the minced cilantro onion from it, the best you can. Because see, remember we wanted to, we wanted to grab all of the flavor from it because now we're getting ready to go into making our grill. So, while we got that going, we're gonna add another stick of butter to that shell. Now that you got that base for your flavoring, we're gonna add in more butter. And then, I was gonna ask the question, but then I grabbed the bag before I asked the question, so it kinda answered itself. I was gonna ask, do you know how to make a great root? Oh, you already got some for me. See, this is why I keep this guy around right here. <laughs> he already got it out for me. So, to make a good root, roots are typically just flour and butter. And now, normally if you're from more so the, the Creole, Cajun states, Louisiana, they call it root. But do you know the other name of what roux is? Absolutely. Somebody said gravy somewhere around here. Exactly. Or is that you over the chief in the corner ship talk? I give you that answer. That's it, exactly. It's no more than gravy. And the thing is, the longer you cook it, the better it gets. The darker it gets, especially if you were going into making gumbos or anything like that, because it's always about the flavor. Low and slow is really the way to go. Now, how you going? I'm going to get out your way in a minute, Chef, but how you holding up that? Right now, right now, what I did was just, uh, I got medium dice on sweet potatoes. So what I'm doing with these sweet potatoes today, I got allspice, I got brown sugar, I got butter. So what I'm doing is saute up these, uh, them sweet potatoes. So, so you know what I mean, it'll be pleased with me, even for, even for kids. And I'm going to add a little bit of, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, cilantro to it to finish off and get a nice little garnish. But, uh, so you going for like a sweet and savory? Yeah, sweet and savory. Mm. You know, if, your kids, if, you, if your kids don't want to just eat those sweet potatoes, like you'll just cook it and put the butter salt, add your little bit of allspice and sugar. Uh, I, I like to use allspice because it's just, it's, it's like it's, uh, like nutmeg, cinnamon, and all that merged into one. So that's what it's made to uh, flavor profile. And if you want to, you can add your little bit of smoked paprika just to just to give it a really nice, nice smoky, smoky flavor. Yeah, and, and smoke paprika really, really changes forms of whatever you're cooking with, which is so good. Now, if you got, now if you guys can see in here, the key with creating a, a good brew or gravy is, is to continually keep it moving. You don't want it to sit still too long at your high heat, which then can cause it to crack. So as you keep it moving, you'll notice that
the consistency starts to change and get brown and brown. Now that leads me to the next thing. We gotta elevate this a little more, because I know a lot of you all got this in the pantry. But chef, by all means, would you mind passing me the peanut butter? So, see, we're gonna add a little peanut butter in it to give it some of that, that natural, natural flavor. Yeah, yeah, y'all probably thinking like, what in the world does this guy do? But trust me, just follow me here. Just follow me here. You got something to get it out of this, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Just follow me. We're gonna add the peanut butter. And see, these are ways that you can add natural sweetness to your dish, and by adding those natural sweetness to your dish, it keeps you from having to use like granulated sugar and things like that. Get you right there. There we go. Keeps you from having to use gran granulated sugar, sugar. So if you're ever worried about like diabetes, things of that nature, you can use alternatives. Thank you, man. You can use alternatives like this to always sweeten your products. Use fresh berries, fresh fruit. And those things, that's the natural way of extracting those sweet flavors out of it. I ain't never thought about that shit. That's, that's a good idea. Right? Exactly. And that peanut butter with Let's see, I grew up in Mississippi. I didn't have a lot, so I learned how to use some here. Like Even making grilled cheese with the iron. On the iron floor. Get the 
steak and I'm gonna add the sugar at the end and give it that nice soft and sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. Look at that, and a nice, nice cool dice like this right here. It's not hard to get. I'm gonna let these cook down right here. Got a lid for you to check if you need one. I'm gonna check on this, check on this pasta there. And one of the things, the, the proper way, one of the proper ways of cooking a pasta is typically al dente. And what happens, a lot of people say, oh, I don't like it al dente, I like it soft. But what happens is, you ready? ready. What happens is, when you cook it al dente, the heat from it, the steam from it, even after you drain it, it's still allowing it to cook, so it prevents it from overcooking, but gives you the kind of soft texture that you like, yeah, yeah. And what you do is it's always good. Add a little olive oil to your cooked pasta. The reason you add the olive oil to it is because the olive oil prevents your pasta from sticking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, we're gonna do several things. We're gonna coat our skillet with a little olive oil. And we're gonna sear off our Warrior Creek sausage in here. Got a little butter to add in front of the So if you 
got any questions, just shout them out to me, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive we will answer them for you. So any questions, anything? Would you repeat the barbecue sauce? Recipe? Yes. Yeah. OK. What you need is ketchup, depending on how much you're trying to make. So if you, if you want to make enough for a family of four, what you need is two cups of ketchup. You need a fourth of a cup of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of liquid smoke, and then from there to give it whatever flavor you want, whether honey, molasses, brown sugar, you would then add in a fourth of a cup of either one. So then from there you can change the process from being a, a molasses style, salt barbecue sauce, brown sugar style, maple style, vinegar base. You know, vinegar bases are when you typically go into the Carolinas and places like that. You can add any of those flavors to it. And also we got our pops of steam back here. Any other questions while we're rolling here? Huh? Oh, you ready to eat? All right, we <laughs> we gonna get we gonna we gonna get you going here. We want to make sure we lock all those flavors in. Lock all of those flavors in. The hash is looking good, chef. From there, we can start back on going to our, our pasta. So. That's my yeah, because see, I mean, I'm just pretty urgent to get that with the very room and add more cream to it. Uh, yeah, I always say go with go with regular butter, you know, because if you're gonna use margarine and butter spreads aren't cheaper, of course. But using margarine and butter spreads is no different than just using Western cooking oil or any of those. Because if you read on the contents of it, what it's gonna uh, what it's gonna tell you on this. 80% vegetable shortening, which means it's the cooking oil that you use anyway. And you use it in a way because you figure, oh, I'm using butter, but all it has is just a butter flavor to it. You're just using just cooking oil that you cook your food with. So I always suggest, and, and real butter go along with, you don't have to use a lot of it. What, what I suggest, in, in, your, in your fridge or pantry, anytime you should have one part butter, one part wherever it is, olive oil. Those two, and that way you can balance out your cooking ratio. You lower the trans fats of what you're putting in your body, and you have a better tasting dish every time, hands down. How we looking on this, y'all? All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into dicing our tomatoes here. Cool way to dice, depending on how you dice at home, as I always say, is use the tic-tac-toe method. Just slice your tomato just like a tic-tac-toe. Don't slice it all the way through. You know how you play the game tic-tac-toe doing the checkerboard. Just go through doing that. When you do that, your tomato look like this. And then when you cut it, see the dice falls down real easy. So it helps you pull a lot better when you cook it in the kitchen. Now, as we're going, you can just keep complete proceeding that way all the way through. And you also can do this with your with your onion as well. If you depend on if you want to go for a diced onion. Alright, I'm gonna fold the tomatoes in, Chuck. Sure. It's ready to be ready. So we're gonna fold in our tomatoes. Because this is your pasta sauce. And granted you see us utilizing a lot of the vegetables and herbs. But as I always share with people, when you're cooking at home, you cook with whatever vegetables, whatever herbs you like, because it's about bringing it into your world, making this dish a part of you. Because a lot of people, you know when you go wrong at whenever you create a dish for somebody else? The first thing people do when they're creating a dish for somebody is, they ask the person what it is that you like. And then you go through this whole round about, oh, okay, I like sweet. I like spicy food, I like this, I like that. And the person who's cooking it is taking all this in, and they're gonna go in the kitchen, they're gonna try to make what it is that you said you like. Then when they bring the dish out, you normally say, oh, it, it tastes okay, but it's something missing. What's missing is, first of all, they didn't have your tongue, so you can never get it spot on. So cooking is meant to bring people into your world. So what you're supposed to do, you go in the kitchen, you cook it the way you like it, and that's what you serve to them. Because food is about a 
experience in the individual that cooks it, and that's what brings a person back here with that. Alright, we got our zucchini. I'm gonna fold our zucchini in over here, chef. We're folding, if you know, we fold a certain ingredient into the pasta, and we serve it, fold the other ingredients in with our sausage. Any more questions so far? Other than you ready to eat? Yeah, you got a website. Huh? Website. Yes, website. Everything is the same as my name, Chef Gennard. C H E L J E R N A R D dot com. But then every, if you go to my Instagram page, which is Chef Gennard also, every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on my Instagram and on my Facebook, I put up five minute meal dishes. I show you how to cook something in the comfort of your own home in five minutes flat. And it's using products that you have. So if you go and you see a download line of all kinds of videos. Also, if you go on YouTube, I have a catalog of videos as well on there. I oh, don't ready for our pasta in here. All right, you go ahead and pour your pasta in. What we're gonna do is, make sure we gotta add in. While you're doing it, we gotta add in our more garlic powder. More onion powder, our smoked paprika. We add in there you go, that chef. And see, also if you notice how the how the pasta slid out, guys, by by adding that olive oil, also help enhance has to keep it from sticking together. You can do this with with spaghetti, uh, with any kind of pasta that you want to utilize. You can do that with it. Yes? No, smoked paprika doesn't make it spicy. Paprika doesn't have any spice content to it, content to it at all. What it does, it just gives it a natural smoky flavor to enhance the notes on the palate. So every time that you're tasting the dish, you get a chance to experience the true flavors of it. And see, that's what a lot of people tend to miss out on whenever they're tasting dishes. They never get a chance to experience the flavor because one or two things happen. It's either too hot or it's too sweet or it's too soft. And see, you want a full balance so that when you open, when you, when you taste it, you, you're supposed to experience every element of the flavor of the dish. So cooking is almost like being a chemist. Learning how to mix, you know, if you remember the old Ziploc commercial, add these in here and then you're ready to pull. Like the old Ziploc commercial. Yellow and blue makes green. Which is true, if you add the color yellow and blue together, turns green. And that's what they would do to Ziploc commercial when you would show that it's sealed. If it turns green, that means it was sealed. The same way with mixing the ingredients and blending them together, it gives it that same experience. Now, we're gonna pull that sausage out, and this is what you want. You want that nice caramelization of the skin going across it, and what that does, that lets you know that this sausage was was packed in a real good skin in here. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice them up just nice and neat in here, and after we slice them up. Who are they playing with the mic though? Stacy, you playing with the mic? They can turn my mic off. It must be time for us to go or something. <laughs> 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 Don't y'all tell me I had plenty of time for them. So now, what we did was, I, I, if you notice, I sliced them, and after I sliced them, I put them back into our butter and olive oil. And the reason why I sauteed them first before slicing them was because I wanted them to still stay in that skin to see what happened is a lot of people get the sausage wise in this raw form and they'll slice it ahead of time and then all of the sausage itself comes out of the skin rapidly. But you want that flavor of the skin in there, so. I'm gonna slice these up here. And these guys are smelling good. Have you all ever tried this sausage before, guys? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. All right. What you think about it? Good? Exactly. Anything else would be uncivilized. <laughs> so we got our beans, and what happens is with the butter, it's absorbing all Yeah, and you know that you know what I just asked him, asked the chef, if he tastes his product. 
out of it. Because any time that you're cooking, the first person that should always taste your food is always the chef. You never serve anything to somebody without tasting. Let's see what we got here so far. Kosher? Mm -hmm. Nice flavor to it. I know, right? I ain't knowing it better. I swear we could. <laughs> Hard out here being a chef, guys. <laughs> now, the one thing that we miss with our sausage, and you made it creamier without what I need mm -hmm. to do with cheese. Exactly. And if you notice, he just made a valid point. What was it that you said, chef? He said you made it creamier without even using cheese. That's where the peanut butter came from. Always. So, what we're going for here? Remember, we were making our barbecue sauce inside of our sausage over here. So we use four tablespoons of brown sugar because remember, you can turn, you can determine whatever flavor, whether it's molasses, brown sugar, honey, whatever you want, you can determine the flavor of it to bring those flavor profiles to life. Now, after you finish sauteing that up, Chef, yes, indeed. Then we're going to fold it all into this pasta sauce to bring it to life. And we want, to, we want a little bit of that barbecue sauce for a little bit as well. There we go. There we go. You know, let, let's switch angles so they can see it with the camera. You, you come on this side, and I go on this side, see we? And y'all see what's going on here? That's how it looks going on top of it. So now, you got all in one. You got your protein, you got your starch, you got your vegetables, and you got your herbs all in one. We're gonna just fold these together. Fold it together, bring it to life, guys. Fold it together. Now, if I wasn't talking, or even you, you can make this dish in the comfort of your own kitchen in 20 minutes or less. Because you know, normally when you go in the kitchen, you just in your zen moment. You blend this together, now we're ready to we ready to go into our plate up mode, guys. You want to get this one? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. There we go, here. Yeah. Huh? Oh, just one plate. The chef got to eat. I came here hungry, guys. Yeah, we'll see y'all next year. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, we got we got plenty more than for you. We just want we just always want to give you that. We just always like tidying up. You know, hey, our mom will get us the way we clean up. Yeah. And so, you got my, my cost of it, I mean, my, my green. Yeah, that's what you want right here. It's guaranteed to bring somebody back home. Okay. And got a little green in there. Mm -hmm. Is this recipe on your list? Yes, you can actually. Yeah, this this is one of the things right here. This particular dish right, we created it customly for you all. We walked in with a host of ingredients, and from walking in with those ingredients, we created a dish right off of that. And don't forget. Chef, we got the sweet potato hash right over here. The sweet potato hash go right there over the top of it. This right here is a, this is a, we're gonna coin this one right here. The Warrior Creek Albany Pasta. <laughs> so that concludes it, guys. All right, that was easy.